Well, thank you for coming this morning. I'm so glad for this opportunity to share with you about uh, the armor of God. We're still in this uh, sermon series about the armor of God, and specifically this morning, we are going to share with you about the shield of faith, the shield of faith. And I'm preaching on Ephesians chapter 6, verse 16. So if you can open your Bible, you can follow up on the screen. Ephesians chapter 6, verse 16. Bible says, In all circumstances, take up the shield of faith with which you can extinguish all the flaming darts of the evil one. Spiritual warfare has been a focus on the last few weeks and we must be prepared to face challenges in our Christian life. There is a life, there is a Christian life, and we are not without any challenge in this life. If you read Ephesians chapter 6, verse 10 and 11, the Bible encourages us to be strong in the Lord and in the strength of his might. Put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the skin of the devil. There is a real battle right now, not just a physical battle on Ukraine, Ukraine or Israel, but in our minds, in our nation, we are facing all kinds of challenges. Dear brothers and sisters, the armor of God represents his provision for believers. We are not alone in this. Until now, Paul's description of the armor has been limited to items we wear. For example, in verse uh, 14, chapter 6, we see there the bell of truth, the breastplate of righteousness, chapter, uh, verse 15, the shoes of the gospel of peace, so we can see all this kind of preparation for the battle. However, today we will look closely at the shield of faith, which is different. We are right now in verse 16. We are not anymore in the comfort zone. We are right now in a battlefield. The Bible says there in six, uh, 16 that there is a shield of faith that we are using it to extinguish the flaming darts, the arrow that came from the enemy in our life. So here we can see two elements in the battle. Number one, the shield that came from God. And number two, the flaming darts that came from the evil. So right now we are in a picture of a life or death, death situation. There is no any more a comfort zone. The flaming darts are everywhere and we have no control on them. We have no control what is happening or what is going to happen to us after leaving this building. So in all this difficult situation, how can we survive? What do we need to know about this present battle? Church, I want to share with you just some implication for believers in this verse, uh, Ephesians chapter 6, verse 16. And the first implication this morning is that when we read this verse, we see an enemy that is searching to destroy us. That is true. There is an enemy, there is a real battle, and we are in the middle of the flaming darts of the evil one. Last night, uh, we woke up yesterday with the news about this war on Israel. If you watch some of the video coming and coming in the media, you can see all this rocket coming and going down in the, you know, over the people in Israel. In many ways, there is a rocket from Satan coming to us. They are trying to make us question of our Christian faith. I remember growing in Cuba when I was there many times in the school. Professor, teacher laughing at you in the school because you were a believer. 
Oh, this is a believer student. He, he, he belonged to Christ. And that was tough when you are a little boy. However, all this came to you even when you are a, a young person or even an older adult person. There is no age for this battle. Ephesians chapter 6, verse 12, we can read there. For we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but against the ruler, against the authorities, against the cosmic power over this present darkness, against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly places. We understand, church, that Satan and his forces are looking for destroy your faith. I can say right now, I'm sure you are having issues in your life. You have circumstances around your life that they are not good for the moment. Satan tried to destroy us and they do it reminding us of our weaknesses. He always tried to do this on me. You can do it better. You are a loser. You can do a go ahead with this. He tried to bring confu confusion sometime. He is moving us to try to believe that we are no good follower of Jesus. We have an enemy. In his book, By Grace Alone, Brother Ferguson identified four major flaming darts from the enemy. Number one, he says, that the enemy tell us, how can you believe he's for you when you see what is happening in your life? Number two, I have some accusation against you because you're sin. Number three, you can say you are forgiven, but you don't. Number four, given your record, what, what's the hope is there that you will endure to the end? All this is about faith and confidence. Probably there are so many more of this. Probably there is so many more of this evil argument. However, the apostle Peter sees those flaming darts in an image of a lion. First Peter chapter five, verse eight through nine, Bible says, be sober-minded, be watchful, because your adversary the devil prowls around like roaring lion seeking someone to devour. Resist him firm in your faith, knowing that the same kind of suffering are being experienced by your brotherhood throughout the world. This the same kind of suffering. As a believer, we have an identity, identity in suffering, in challenge and tribulation. However, church, we must not grow weary. We have hope, we must fight we must fight firm in our faith in Jesus Christ. Charles Spurgeon used to say, every Christian is born a warrior. It is his destiny to be assaulted. It is his duty to attack. We are not here just to, to receive the influence of the evil, the dart from Satan, we are here to fight the good fight for Jesus. Therefore, the command of the Lord is this. In all circumstances, take up the shield of faith. There is an enemy. It's an enemy that is searching to destroy us. But the good news, church, is that we are not without resources in this battle. We are not alone. We are not without resources in the battle. In the scripture, 
the shield has been an image of God protection for his people. From the very beginning of the Old Testament, for example, in Genesis chapter 15, verse one, we can read, after these things, the word of the Lord came to Abram in a vision. Fear not, Abram, I am your shield. Your reward shall be great, shall be very great. That is so encouraging. God is telling Abraham, no matter what life brings, I'm your protection. I'm your protection. Is God your protection? Is he your shield? It was a shield for Abraham, but also for, was a, a shield for King David. In Psalm 5, verse 12, Bible says, for you bless the righteous, O Lord. You cover him with favor as with a shield. In Psalm 18, verse two, Bible says, the Lord is my rock and my fortress. I might deliver my God, my rock, in whom I take refuge. And look in the word again my shield and the horn of my salvation, my strong hold. He is our shield. Now, in Ephesians chapter six, verse 16, Paul is reminding us that we must acknowledge that this shield of faith is sufficient to extinguish all Satan's strategies against the church. How, you say amen to this? All this shield of faith is sufficient. There is nothing better than our assurance of salvation by faith in Jesus. Dear brother, it is enough. The shield is enough for the totality of the need. He is enough. His provision, God's provision is enough for this battle. In 2 Corinthians chapter 10, verse four, we can read, for the weapons of our warfare are not of the flesh, but have divine power to destroy strongholds. Probably sometimes we need to use uh, physical weapons, but there is nothing like the weapons that God has provided for us. And we can resist Satan and go ahead in our Christian life only when we lean on the power of God. And this is what this nation needs, and this is what the world needs to lean in the power of the Almighty God. I don't know what are you facing this morning, but the good news in this battle is that we are not without resources. You are not alone in this battle. And this leads me to the final proposition today, the final proposition, because an enemy is searching us and we are not uh, alone in the battle, that means that the shield of faith is a guarantee of our victory. The shield of faith is a guarantee of our victory. Dear brother, faith is one of the greatest gifts from God. This is faith, it is built over the foundation of Christ, Christ's redemption on the cross. And this is the fundamental message of the gospel. We can be sure that with the shield of faith, we can extinguish all the flaming darts from the evil one. There is a pastor, Tony Evans. He, I, I quote him in this, uh, and I remember about this quotation, and I want to share with you. He says, you are not fighting 
for victory. You are fighting from victory. This battle has already been won in Jesus Christ. And this is our hope. You are not fighting alone. Even when you are not enough, Jesus is enough for your life. How has the battle been won? Well, the Bible says, by faith we receive grace and enter in the right relationship with God. Ephesians chapter two, verse nine, we can read there, for by grace you have, you have been, sorry, saved through faith. And this is not your own doing, it is a gift of God. You are here this morning. I don't know why you decide to come, but let me tell you this. You are here because the grace of God is over you. In some way, it's over your life. By faith, we belong to Jesus. We belong to God and have peace with him. Romans chapter five, verse one and two says, therefore, since we have been justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. Through him, we have also obtained access, and notice this, by faith into this grace in which we stand. And we rejoice in hope of the glory of God. I don't know what is your hope today, but the church of Christ rejoice in the hope of the glory of God. This present generation, this present world that we are living today is getting mad every day. But I tell you this, the glory of God, that day that is coming to us is growing and every hour is closest to us. This is a promise from the Bible. This is by faith. We believe this by faith. By faith, Bible says that we have defeat, defeated the world. First John chapter five says, for everyone who has been born of God overcomes the world. And this is the victory that has overcome the world, our faith. Who is it that overcome the world? except for the one who believe that Jesus is the Son of God. This is the faith that I want for you to have. When Fidel Castro took the power in Cuba in 1959, and the communist government started leading the island, controlling everything, the media, well, not just the media, just the radio and TV, there was no Facebook, nothing like this. <laughs> but he controlled the papers, the media, he controls everything, and the first thing he did was taking out all the missionaries uh, from another country. He, he put them in a plane and sent them to the United States or every, every all around. And he took the Cuban pastors in that time and sent them to a faraway place in the island and putting them to working on the, on the field, on the farm, for weeks and months. And they closed the school, the Bible Institute. They did everything pursuing to change the mentality of the Cuban people. He wants to build a new man, a new man just founded in preparation school, being professional education, but he tried to eliminate the idea of God. And let me tell you this, he tried hard. He put in people in jail, he do a lot of stuff. However, he died, Fidel Castro died, I think 2006, and the gospel of Christ is still alive in my island. <laughs> Jesus is still there. And there is a, 
a new generation like many of you guys here, a new generation coming to him and looking for him. When we woke up today, every morning, we face hundreds of messages about the state of the country, about the state of the world. Each city has a culture. Each movement has a flag. But when we raise the shield of faith, we are raising the flag of Jesus. We are raising the flag of the cross and we are telling this world that the Lord, our Lord, is the Lord of all creation. This is our Lord. This is our faith. I love how Martin Lloyd Jones described the action of raising the shield of faith. He said, the shield of faith is the ability to apply belief to answer everything the devil does and happen to do in your life. Faith is not just an intellectual belief, but it's always practical to apply truth. Faith point to God, praise the Lord. Never to itself, faith depends on God and his grace when attacks come. It's not about how big is your faith. It's not about how you structure your life, how faithful you are, Pastor, I'm so faithful. It's about God, and it's about his gift, and it's about his honor in our life. James chapter 1, 17 said, every good gift and every perfect gift is from above coming down from the Father of light, with whom there is no variation or shadow due to change. Every good gift and every good thing come from the Father. And the ultimate good, the ultimate good he provides is Jesus, is Jesus. And he, Jesus is the greatest treasure. He is our shield and the reason for our victory. We are today here because he conquered the grave for us. As he declared in John chapter 10, I am the door, church. If anyone enter by me, said Jesus, he will be safe and will go in and out and find pastors. The thief come only to steal and kill and destroy. But I came that they may have life and have it abundantly. That's a tough word. <laughs> abundantly. I say, I say the best that I can do it. But the point is that Jesus, Jesus provide for us, or Jesus' provision for us is enough. Enough. He's the greatest, the greatest gift. Living a Christian life involves getting into a battle. If you like it, it's not, it's going to happen. We are in a battle against the kingdom of darkness. It is real. In Cuba and United States, all around the world. Therefore, we must remember the implication of these measures for our church. And especially after a physical world that is always a spiritual world before, and we are right now in this point. Remember this, an enemy is searching, is seeking to destroy us. But the good news is that we are not alone in this battle. We have resources, we have the weapons that God has provided for us. Therefore, the shield of faith is a guarantee of our victory because our faith in Jesus 
is the faith that overcome the world. Before praying, closing with praying, let's rejoice in the fact that he is with us. Let's rejoice in the good news of the gospel that Jesus won the battle for us. He did it. He did it. Let's pray together. Heavenly Father, thank you for this uh, great opportunity. You know I'm just an instrument, but you are the king. You are the Lord. And I ask you, Lord, that in my imperfection, in my weaknesses, you glorify yourself and you give fame to your name. You are good. You have been so good throughout the years. And even when we are in a spiritual battle, give us the confidence to know that you are fighting for us. But the good thing is that you are ready won the battle for us. Oramos en el nombre que es sobre todo nombre, en ese nombre precioso Jesús que hemos conocido desde que nacimos a este mundo. Nombre hermoso, nombre glorioso. We pray in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen.